Hello students, welcome to the Analog and Digital Electronic Lab. So in this lab, we are going to just see the components that are required in order to perform the digital experiments. So the device that you are seeing in front of you is called the Digital IC Trainer. So this device is going to be used in order to perform the digital laboratory experiments. Okay. So let us understand the device thoroughly so that it becomes easy for you to perform the experiments. So this is how we are going to use this. So basically the first thing is that you have to connect this trainer to a power supply you have a cable which is connected to this trainer okay and there is a power supply button you have to connect it and then you can find out that there is a button which is behind this trainer which is on and off now you can see this is on okay sorry off and you can see the trainer is off here you can indicate that there is a LED which indicates that whether the trainer is uh, working or no. So when you put this uh, button on, you can see that the LED is glowing. So this indicates that the trainer is in a working condition. Okay. Now apart from that, you can see there are many input connections that you are there. There are many types of buttons which are available. So the first thing here is you can understand this is the IC holder. This is the IC holder where you are going to insert an IC on this particular place. Okay. So and this is a notch. This is a notch which is going to hold the IC very firm on this IC holder. Okay. So let me demonstrate by placing an IC on this particular IC board. So this is how, so student you can see this is an IC, okay, and this IC uh, has many pins, okay, so here you can see these are the pins which are coming out of this IC, and then you can see a notch at the top end of this IC, there is a notch at the top end of this IC, this tells that from the left hand side of this particular notch, the pin number of this IC starts that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there are 14 pins coming out of this IC. Okay, you can see there are 14 pins that are coming out of this IC. 7 on the other side and here now you will see how to insert the IC on the IC holder. Here you can see you can place this IC properly on the IC holder and put a notch so that the IC gets connected and firmly on this IC holder okay now this is how the IC is connected and placed on the IC holder okay now here you can see as this is a 14 pin IC you can see this IC holder is of 16 pin Okay, it has totally 16 pins, but as my IC is of 14 pin, so the last two pins will be uh, remain empty. Okay, now here you can see on this uh, trainer, you have this uh, VCC and you have a ground. So whatever power supply that we are going to give to this IC is coming from this pin, that is from this particular point. And in order to avoid and safeguard this IC from excess power supply coming and getting the IC damaged, we have to connect this IC to ground. Okay, so the ground connection is done to this pin which is in black color and VCC uh, pin which is in red color. Okay, and then we have this pins labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. Okay. So similarly you can find there are uh, 4 uh, compartments available which where you can connect 
four simultaneous IC at a given point of time if the circuit demands. Okay, so here you can see uh, from this particular IC holder. Okay, you can see that uh, this has 16 pins and each pin are internally connected. So from uh, IC holder here you can see from this pin number uh, hole number one. Okay, which is there here. You can see this one. Okay, it is directly connected to pin number one. Then pin number two is connected to here. Then three is connected to three. Four is connected to four. Five is connected to five. Six and seven. Then eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Like this. Okay. So this is how we have the connection available. Apart from that, you can see there are two sections available here one is the logic input section whatever input that you are going to give it to your circuit that you have designed will be going through this inputs so the cables are to be connected to all these input pins okay and here you can see the input pin has a low and a high so whenever i make it as uh, on the top it is high and when i make it as a low Okay, when I push this button bot at towards uh, bottom, it will go off. When I put it on the top and I push it on the top, it, the light will glow. Similarly, you can see here. Okay, so here you can see the input connections which are there. Next to understand is this is the logic output. Okay, so output is available on the output lines of this particular trainer so here you can see uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so there are 10 output pins available and there are 10 input pins similarly available okay so as per the given input you will find the output available on the output lines similarly you have these leds connected which will glow accordingly to the in input that you have given Apart from that, you have, uh, if you require additional power supply. Now, the power supply that we will be giving it to the IC is 5 volts. Okay, 5 volt IC uh, power supply will be, VCC will be going to this IC. Apart from that, if we require some uh, additional power supply, more than 5 volts, you can connect it to this additional points which are available. Okay. And then we also have a clock pulse. Okay, so these clock pulse are required for few of the experiments where the clock pulse will initiate the input values and the output values also will change according to the clock pulse we have given. So there are different clock pulse available. We have 1 hertz, 10 hertz, 100 hertz, 1k hertz, and 10k hertz clock pulse available. Then also we have this mono pulse. Here the difference between this clock pulse and this clock pulse is that here by pressing this button, okay, we can manually uh, give the clock pulses to the circuit that we have connected, okay, by connecting to the high and low. Here what happens when we are using this clock pulses, the clock pulses are automatically generated and here there is no manual intervention required to change the clock pulse from low to high and high to low so here pressing of the button uh, and releasing of the button indicates that we are giving one one clock pulse at a given point of time apart from that we have a breadboard connection done here the details of this breadboard i will be explaining to you when we start with your uh, analog uh, laboratory experiment so this breadboard is additionally provided in case if you require some uh, ICs to be connected uh, to this particular experiment. So this is basically student how your trainer is going to be. So there is one more uh, device attached to this. We call it as a 7 segment display. You have a 7 segment display uh, decoder experiment. Uh, when we are using that you require this uh, device which will be showing you the connection uh, output on this particular display screen okay so this is all about your digital ic trainer